Hey guys, welcome to this new episode. Uh, we missed last week, obviously, because we were out of town, uh, but we're back this week and we're going to have Jessica on from Shoes, Booze, and Tattoos. Uh, most of you have seen, or I guess not really not seen, but tonight you will, but you've heard her on our show. She's been on a couple of times talking uh, about some witchy type stuff. So we thought it would be fun to bring her on and talk about a lot of things that, that we've talked about in private, but not really talked about as much on the show, which is, uh, you know, very, a lot of different, uh, I guess we'll say witchy type subjects that we really enjoy. So I guess with uh, no further ado, let's go ahead and bring Jess on. Hey, Jess. Hi, guys. Hi. We are excited to have you on. Uh, of course, people who came to the Point Pleasant show last year got to see you actually host the show. Right. Some of the other ones, us and History Goes Bump and Brohio and a couple others out there. That was and so fun. That was fun. It was. It was. Fun. it was a lot of fun. Hey, everybody that's saying hey. Hi. Hey, Hi. Jess, can, can you see the comments by any chance? No. Okay. Well, we, we gave it a shot. <laughs> I need to sit here like this, though. So. Yeah, I thought we'd take a few seconds, Jess, and, and tell everybody <laughs> about your show. Tell them about what Shoes, Booze, and Tattoos is and, and what you kind of try to cover every week. I cover a lot of stuff. <laughs> I didn't want to pick just one genre because that's not all I like. I love the paranormal, but I also love true crime. I, I love conspiracy theories, but that's something that's really hard to cover, like, just by yourself. And I'm a practicing witch, but there's a lot of confusion <laughs> when it comes to witchcraft out there. So that's kind of one of the things that I did want to talk about in my show so that it's not as misunderstood. But I talk about everything and anything that's just a little out of the ordinary. And I've really loved all the different things that I've covered so far. The Basic Witches episodes are definitely my favorites. They are the ones that get the most feedback. Like every week I get messages about it. Angie Young says that she loves shoes, booze, and tattoos. Hi, Angie. Thank you. We had an opportunity to meet Angie in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. I don't remember either. No, it was year before last. But yeah, so it was uh, very nice. And Tiffany says woohoo. Uh, Hi, Tiffany. Do you see Tiffany has green hair now? Yes, it looks that. awesome. I love it. <laughs> and Tiffany, I mailed you something out today. It's supposed to be there by Tuesday or Wednesday. So. <laughs> And uh, Tina, we're just going through some of these. We're waiting on some more people to get on. Hey, Mandy, Tiffany, and Leslie. Ruth says, J Jess, your hair is so cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I'm going pink next. Are you? I don't know. Oh. I love your pink, though. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate so, it. Let's, hey, Brian. Let's talk about this, Jess. A, a while What's back. That? You had, uh, we were talking, I remember we were talking on the phone, and I yeah. had made a comment about Eye of Newt, and uh -huh. made a joke, and you said, you know, Eye of Newt is really not an Eye of Newt, it's actually, boom, and I said, you know, you should do a show on that, and you actually did a show later that week uh -huh. based on all that stuff, so I wanted you to kind of cover, much like you did in that episode, and like you were talking about a while ago, about dispelling some of the myths and talking about it, Yeah. tell, tell us a little bit about what some of these herbs and spices and uh now i'm craving chicken uh, <laughs> when are you not craving chicken <laughs> tell us about some of the herbs and stuff that are used that have the different names and why they had different names back in the day well you made the joke some kind of joke involving eye of newt and eye of newt is mustard seed and when it comes to folk names for herbs and stuff like that it's usually what they look like so if you look at a mustard seed, it's yellow and has this teeny little black dot on it. And it looks like an eye from like a little lizard, a little newt. Oh, that's so so cool. that's how they referred to things so that when you were out looking for these things, you could see it and know exactly what it was. So like um, bat swing is another one where it's not the actual like completely cut off wing of a bat. <laughs> it's holly. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so interesting. Because it's shaped like a bat's wing. Yeah. 
And it's the same thing with moss. Moss is wool of bat. Because it's like that fuzzy, just like almost a fur, but it's on the ground. So it's just referred to as wool of bat. And there's tons of them like that. There's beggar's buttons, which is burdock. There's blood, which is elder sap. It's not actual blood, like from a person. <laughs> There's the corpse plant. Where does someone huh? get an elder sap at? Where do, where do you get elder sap at? From an elder tree? Right, but I mean, <laughs> okay, let me take that a different direction. Where, I mean, how easy is it to come across, I guess is what I should say. Because I don't, an elder tree, you're talking about like an, where elder berries come from or? Yeah, yeah, just the, the elder berry bush, the berry tree, you can actually get sap from it. And it's this dark red color, and it looks like blood. Oh, my gosh. So that's that's what it is. And most of these things are used in healing. They were some form of medicine or had some medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. I'm not positive on what all of them are. I have a terrible memory, so I can never remember them. I always have to write down what they're good for. But, I mean, it's stuff like this goes back further and further and it may not be exactly what it looks like but it might be what it's used for mm -hmm. like death's herb is belladonna because it can kill you <laughs> oh makes sense yeah and that's one that maybe you don't you don't usually stumble across it in the wild too often <laughs> but if you do you you can die from eating the berries the leaves the any part of the plant is very toxic they used it in beauty products for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Usually to dilate the eyes to make them look a little more dough like. What? Mm-hmm. Killer eyes. Uh-huh. Oh my lordy. Kimberly Kimberly said finally caught you live. Mary Meet Jess. Hi. Hi, Kimberly. Sam, what did you just say? Sam said something funny. Jerry keeps telling me he's going to do these shirtless and he keeps disappointing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like how all three of us that are on here, I'm the one he wants to see shirtless, but that's cool. Oh, Sam now. Oh. That's all right. We love you, honey. Chris is back from, uh, from Germany again. He yes. sees signs on old time. He does. Christopher, we are so glad to see you, honey. Every time it means it's the world to us that you guys are on here, especially from Germany. It's great. There you go, Sam. Oh. Hi, Johnny. See, actually, all you do is you just get to see my big scar. <laughs> from my surgery. You want me to show my scar? No, I do not want you to show your scar. <laughs> Unless it's an He's, appendix scar. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's always trying to compete with me on the, you know, open heart surgery thing, so. Me too. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> so, Jess, what else? Do you, do you have any more herbs or anything? Or do you have any other, uh, uh, have that any other myths that you would like to dispel while you're on the air? Well, we don't eat babies. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> okay. And there's nothing involving children or babies, you know, no sacrifices or anything like that. Yeah. It's really never been a thing for witchcraft. Yeah. We don't worship the devil. Most of us don't believe there is one. But I mean, another one that's pretty heavily debated, even with practicing witches. Is is a Christian witch possible? And I, I had that on my list to ask you that because I, I have seen both sides of this. I've had mm -hmm. uh, witches say that that's not possible, and I've had other witches say it is possible. And I've mm -hmm. always been on the the possible, yeah, side. So, well, I myself, I'm not Christian. I am pagan. I'm not Wiccan. <laughs> Witchcraft isn't. A religion. It is if you want it to be, you can incorporate it into your religion, but it's completely separate from it. Like my mom, she is a practicing witch, but she's also a Christian. Mm -hmm. She does incorporate both into her practice. So if she's doing something to where she uses a deity, she'll use Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or God. Those that's just what she uses instead of like Persephone or Aphrodite or anything like that. That's just the only one she works with. I don't work with any deities at all. There's no one right way to practice witchcraft. It's completely individual. 
But a lot of the traditional witches or even Wiccans will try to tell you that there is one way and it's this way. But that's just not the case for everybody. Right. You know. So let me ask you a question as it pertains to your mom. Yeah. How can, because I'm just, and I'm not asking as much for me as that I know people out there are thinking, how can you be Christian and a witch at the same time? Because there has to be, there has to be other things that conflict with what being a Christian is. Because being a Christian states that you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and that's your, that's your only way. And isn't there mm. conflicts in the witchcraft part of it? that would go against what the teachings in the Bible say? Um, yes and no. <laughs> if you ask my mom about this, she'll tell you that the Bible was written by man. As much as we want to accept it as fact and that's it, it's not because it contradicts itself all the time. I agree with that. When you read about Jesus. Now, this is coming from somebody that is not Christian. <laughs> when you read about Jesus... He talks about what he does, and he also says, everything I can do, you can also do. And my mom really started digging into that, and I know she started reading through the Bible and took verse by verse, broke things down, but there are instances constantly throughout the Old Testament and a lot of the New Testament where a lot of these bishops, priests, holy men are doing things that are considered witchcraft. They're using divination. They're using herbs for healing. Things that a lot of times now get associated with witchcraft, especially the divination part. The part that is a little frustrating is the word witch was not put in there until King James, when he put out a new translation of the Bible. The word witch, like thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, was actually poisoner before. Which makes sense. You're not going to allow somebody that goes around and poisons people, a murderer, to live. It wasn't which. That got kind of t twisted to suit a certain, a certain time frame where the Bible was being reworded, rewritten into English again. So that's a big misconception. Yeah, because that was, that was going to be my next question was, you know, the Bible specifically has wording in there about witches. Mm -hmm. and so, but that makes sense if it wasn't originally like that. Yes. Originally it was poisoner. And then at some point it got translated to sorcerer, which would be somebody practicing black magic, harming other people, yeah. which still makes sense. And then with King James and the new revised version, sorcerer and witch were synonymous. Sorry. <laughs> So that was not us that time. <laughs> so this dog. But see, that makes it makes sense. The, the whole the Christian, which semi, not semi, but it, it makes perfect sense to me mm -hmm. in the fact that in witchcraft you have deities that you hold above all to help you with whatever you're trying to do, and if those deities are God and Jesus. That really right. doesn't make it any different than any other Christian religion. It's like saying a prayer. Right. I mean, if I grew up Catholic, if you've ever been to a Catholic mass, it's so close to being like a very ceremonial witchcraft. <laughs> there's incense. There's speaking in tongues. There's prayer. There's genuflection. There, there's so much ritual bits of it that it's very close to a lot of the the rituals that I've seen performed by witches. Well, and on top of that, we're going to take the most holy of all, all Christian holidays, which would be Christmas. And a lot of the traditions to celebrate Christmas are actually taken from pagan rituals. Yes. Yeah, I like the tradition of the Christmas tree. That That's a very traditional pagan thing to do. And Christians didn't bring in trees to honor Jesus. Pagans brought them in to give the wood spirits warmth for the winter and to bring good luck. Hmm. How about that? So you learned something. I did learn. I actually learned a lot. 
I'm gonna go buy okay, some Mandy, tea Mandy too. says, Jess, I'm getting ready to have surgery. I want to know what's good to carry with me to the hospital. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say a surgeon. That the That's best. a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> what would your suggestion be for her to bring uh, her, uh, help with the healing process and to make sure things go right? If you're talking about like crystals, I don't know a ton about crystals. I know the very basics. So you would want something for luck. Usually luck is green. So jade is a good one to bring with you. If you have a jade stone, if you happen to have a piece of jewelry that has a green stone in it, it would be good to wear that there and maybe have it with your personal belongings for after. Um, red is usually good for health because it's the same color as blood. Mm -hmm. So anything with blood circulation, healing, things like that is going to help with, and if all else fails, a clear stone like clear quartz. It's kind of an all purpose, easy type thing to use. Same with diamond, wear your wedding ring, if you have one, whatever. Anything like that is might help. But definitely when it comes to surgery and things like that, just always follow your doctor's orders. <laughs> don't rely on crystals to help you heal. Yeah, don't don't follow the uh, Bob Marley school of logic there. It doesn't work. <laughs> hey, Lindsay. How are you, sweetheart? That's Lindsay Estes from, uh, you probably remember her from a couple of weeks ago when her and Lisa were on the show. From your haunted, uh, I'm sorry, I drew a blank. I started looking <laughs> at Brian's. Your haunted oh, holiday? I'm sorry, your haunted holiday. I, just, I started reading Brian's comment. <laughs> the first book on herbalism contained the other names for herbs. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Great question. None of us know. Good question. That's why she's a practicing witch. She still doesn't have it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and luckily, nobody's life depends on me. So, yeah. so Nate says, Jerry and Tracy, when will y'all do an episode on Octagon House in Franklin, Kentucky? And just how about a show on the Bell Witch Cave? Uh, on ours, we've actually done one on Octagon Hall. I cannot remember if it was a Patreon episode or a regular episode, but I know it's been probably two years ago. I remember you doing that. Yeah, and on an episode a couple of weeks ago on one of these lives, we actually just touched on, uh, a little bit on it. Uh, what about you, Jess? Have you? I thought you did one on the Bell Witch Cave. Have you not? I know you talked about it. I thought I did, but maybe I just did the notes for it and went to something else. I don't know. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you did, but maybe not. I might not have. I'll have to go back and double check because if I didn't, I definitely want to cover that at some point because there's another case that I want to bring in with that that's very similar. Oh, really? Do tell. You Are covered you it. Secret? Well, you, you covered it. Are you talking about the Greenbrier? Nell Butler. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Is that Nellie Butler? Is that her name? Yeah, Nellie Butler. Yeah. yeah. Awesome story. Awesome story. It was a good story, but all of the things are very, very similar to the Bell Witch. Yeah, I think I think you actually gave me that one, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because I had never heard of it. Anyway, Les <laughs> Leslie Fear, our favorite author and star of Fear of the Week, just subscribe to your podcast, Jess. Can't wait to dig in and learn about witchcraft, especially since I'm currently writing a book with a character who is a practicing witch. Oh, awesome. It's yeah. unlike Leslie to self-promote. Um, <laughs> well, for those of you, the, for those of you listening right now who are fans of Fear of the Week, we had announced earlier in the week that we were going to be going away from uh, from having a bunch of the extra episodes, and we were going to have to unfortunately cut out that segment. But we have since got with Leslie and decided that we didn't want to get rid of that segment. Too many people like it, and we found a way to be able to do it but instead of being on a thursday episode it's going to go to bi-weekly instead of weekly and starting here in the next couple of weeks uh, we'll start doing them on sunday nights we'll put them in the end of sunday night so every other week you'll get fear of the week and then the other weeks we'll get uh, either a listener story that called in or we'll get uh, uh, some type of uh, interview that we've done so all that's just going to move to sunday nights now there just won't be uh, separate episodes so those See, I love people. Fear of the Week. Yeah, oh, a lot of people yeah, do. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We learn a lot from her for sure. Mandy said your podcast is awesome. Oh, thank you. 
Karina says she is a practicing witch. Yes, Karina. I can never say her name. Villarreal. Villarreal. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny when you say something like, I'm a witch, how many people go, oh, me too. Or, I you know. I didn't know that I knew any witches mm -hmm. until uh -huh. within the last year. And then that's all of a sudden it's like, I've, I've met probably 15 people through the show that are, that are all witches. Mm -hmm. Just never knew. Well, a lot of people still do keep it, it pretty private. I mean, I didn't even come out of the closet with it until pretty recently either. It was maybe two or three years ago that I even told my family. Mm -hmm. I always just kept it a secret. It was just your thing, so. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Let's see. Who else we got now? Uh, Karina, are you coming to the Pigeon Ford show? I know you talked about it. Mm -hmm. We need to get you out there. Yes, a new comment is going live. She said... Uh, Hey, while I'm flipping through these things, Jess, we talked earlier, because you're going to refresh my memory again. What is the, the black, uh, I guess, crystal, tourmaline. tourmaline? Tell people about that. <laughs> it works. I see it mentioned all the time, but I never really yes. know where to get it or what it does. Well, black tourmaline is really good for protection. It is a crystal. It's a small black crystal that has like these um vertical striations in it if you break it 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 kind of just looks like um like bristles on an old broom you know what i mean how they're just straight up and down the whole way and kind of like vary a little bit this is a really good stone especially if you're a paranormal investigator to maybe just have in your car even it can I think have an in, uh, have an effect on investigations because it repels negativity. It repels like negative energy. So if you're trying to communicate with stuff there, if anything senses it, they might just kind of steer clear of you. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things like if you hop in the car with that in there, it's kind of still going to repel that negative energy away from you. And it's a good one to use because a lot of black stones, a lot of crystals need cleanse because they absorb energy, mm -hmm. but then they'll put it back out as something else. So you have to cleanse them. This one doesn't, it just repels. So you never have to cleanse it. It's low maintenance, <laughs> That's good. but a lot of paranormal investigators use it for protection. So nothing follows them home. So let me ask you this and you may not know the answer. <laughs> Why is it? that certain herbs or, uh, like I said, things like quartz, any type of crystals, why is it that they have an effect on spirits or, or in it? Like, why does, why does sage, for example, drive spirits out? What is it about sage that spirits don't, don't like? What is it about salt that has an effect you know what I'm saying? It just yeah. things seem so random. It's like, why would a spirit have a problem with salt? You know, why would a spirit have a problem with sage? Can you enlighten me a little bit on that? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> both both salt and sage have this purifying bit to them. If you add salt to water, it's going to help get out impurities. Like if you boil it with salt, it's going to help take out some of those impurities in the water all of these things are used in purification of some kind so if the energy in there isn't something you want obviously you and i aren't affected by it but our spirits are in in a physical body so anything that's not physical is kind of pushed out when it comes to crystals that's kind of a different story because they are they you can measure the energy coming off of crystals they know there's something to that. We can scientifically prove that these crystals put off a certain kind of energy. It might be different kinds. You can't really tell that by a test as to what kind of energy it's putting off, but you can tell it's putting off something. And it's just kind of trial and error as to what works and what doesn't. And it's a passed down knowledge that a lot of people have. Somebody told them or somebody taught them 
for these extended periods of times that these things work for this purpose. You could also argue that it's your own belief that these things work. That it doesn't have to do with them at all. It's you doing it. But if the salt works, how can you have a ghost ship that's out on the ocean? That's what I want to know. That's a very good question. <laughs> Maybe because it's above the ocean? Maybe. Maybe. So Maybe Ruth, it floats right above it. Ruth said, so is it possible to hex someone without knowing it? I used to joke about mom casting the evil eye on people that crossed her. I mean, yeah, it's when it comes down to it, at least in my opinion, it's your intention behind something. It doesn't have anything to do with your ingredients, your words. It's the emotion, the feeling, and the energy you put into it that makes it work. Interesting. Mandy says, thanks, Jess. It's a full knockout surgery. Just just a boost would be good. Uh, hope everything goes good, Mandy. Yeah. I know I've been reading yes. on it. You'll be all right. <laughs> Sam says, I'll be there, Tina. Wait to meet everyone who I haven't yet. I must have missed something. Where Tina. Oh, Tina says she wants to go to Pigeon Forge. Going to work on that. Good. Yeah. Good. Sam just got his ticket yesterday. Awesome. Wasn't the lady who made the monkey farts candle a witch? Or am I wrong about that? Yes. Brie is a witch. And it's it's the funny thing. Oh. <laughs> it's What? <laughs> people wouldn't have a clue. What? what but yes, and Brie was actually at that same show, yeah. Angie was at, so she got to meet her. So, like, Brie is a practicing witch, but she's, like, 100% into Ouija boards and tarot cards, and she doesn't see anything wrong with it. Uh, yeah. Other people that I talk to, they're practicing witches. They don't want anything to do with Ouija boards, and it's it's just, like, there really is so many different levels of witchcraft, I guess, just, like, there are different yeah. levels of Christianity and, and what have you. Well... <laughs> I did an episode on Ouija boards where I kind of talked about that a little bit. But ultimately, it kind of just depends on how you feel towards a Ouija board. If you're going into it afraid of what's going to come through, that's what you're going to attract is things that are attracted to fear. Yeah. If you go in there thinking nothing of it, it's just another form of divination, like anything else, like a pendulum or tarot cards, which are all divination. That's what you're going to get. You're going to get a much better experience. Leslie says, Jess, do you have any abilities like telepathy, clairvoyance, etc.? I wish. I'm about as psychic as a potato. <laughs> I don't I don't have any abilities. There's nothing that makes me different from anybody else. There's Mike Sulzer says, What's up, good people? Mike is the gentleman who writes our uh, rap at the beginning of the show. Hey, He's Mike. Sort of Oh, hi! Writer and performer. Check his stuff out. He's good. Yeah, you gotta look him up under Tragic. Yeah. Look, look him up under there. Give him a listen. He'll love it. There was something else I was going to ask you, Oh, you've got the story about uh, witches riding brooms. Mm. Tell us how yes. that all got started. Well, we cover this on your Halloween bonus episode. Yeah. And I was so glad I got to cover this. Because it is something that is even still questioned. Like, we see these things that are associated with witches, and we wonder why, what made them that way. When it comes to writing broomsticks, it's a thought that quite possibly witches would use broomsticks to insert <laughs> certain herbs so that they could trip. <laughs> you mean trip in the way like, like an LSD trip yes they're psychedelics now a lot of these herbs for a flying ointment were classically poisonous herbs but they're ones that if you don't ingest them like if you don't eat them you're not going to die but if you use them topically you're you're going to be tripping out like an LSD trip or a psychedelics trip and these are like belladonna Henbane, Jimson weed, hemlock, uh, mandrake, wolfsbane, they all contain either atropine, hyscopamine, or scopolamine, which are all psychedelics. All of those are. So they would just put you in a, a different state of reality, basically. 
And this is where they would get visions or at times that's, that's why there was the idea that they would leave their body astral project to go dancing with the devil, because these things do help with astral projection. They are dangerous. <laughs> so there's now like a revised way to use this flying ointment. And this was classically thought to be put on the handle of a broomstick and inserted vaginally. Interesting. <laughs> But now they say to use like incense is preferable or an oil that you rub like on your actual body, on your arms <laughs> and stuff like that. But that's usually like mugwort, sandalwood, bay leaf, things that aren't toxic to you. Because if you use too much, you can get very sick. But that's where... No, I was just sitting here thinking KY was missing out on some good... <laughs> <laughs> But that's one thought that these things were used to basically administer a flying ointment. Another thought is that it's kind of the same situation as like the cauldron, the cat, like a familiar, things that you would just see around a normal house. They're domestic items that a woman of the house would use, a broom, a big pot, like a cauldron to cook their dinner for the next week. All these things are very feminine. It was it was more a a fear of something that a woman might be able to do. It was the same thing as the thought that we're more prone to being manipulated by the devil than a man is. It's a very outdated thought. <laughs> I mean, but that's basically the history of the flying ointment why witches ride broomsticks and what the thought process is behind that brian said they rectally administered hallucinating drugs at the sound uh -huh. so that that's in what you were saying yeah that it's just another hole <laughs> Brian, you're just full of rectal yeah, facts. Yeah, what's up with this, Brian? It's Brian, Brian listens to uh, the other show as well, so. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Well, I mean, that's definitely it. I mean, both absorb things like alcohol or psychedelics much faster <laughs> than if you were to ingest them orally. Yeah. And if only I could have a Spanish book suppository, I'd be in business because I had a hard time learning that stuff. <laughs> All right, I think I got most of the questions knocked out. We're caught up on that. Jess, what else you got for us? You got anything else that you prepared for us? I, I have my whole grimoire sitting here just in case you ask me any questions I wasn't prepared for. First of all, let's tell everybody, because we covered this when when uh, we had our other witch Shelby on, the, on here, but tell everybody what a grimoire is for those who missed that. Oof. Well, there is a difference between a grimoire and a book of shadows. A Book of Shadows is meant to be private. Like, it's just the witches. It's only for the witches' eyes. A grimoire is different because you could share it with people. This is something that you can share with family. You could pass down to your children. That's what I have because I, I obviously don't mind talking about this and sharing this information. <laughs> so I've even posted pictures of mine, I think, on Patreon and in the group, in my Facebook group. So that's the big difference between the two. A grimoire is anything from recipes to spells to different ways you celebrate Sabbaths. It's everything. All this different information about herbs and crystals. Anything you want to put in there that relates to your craft, you can. Makes sense. What made mm -hmm. you become a witch at what point in time what happened to where you said you know what this is the direction i think i want to go uh i can't honestly say what my mind frame was but the first time i cast a spell was when i was 12 <laughs> it's been a long time so i don't know the exact mind frame i was in but i know i was always interested in it i think a large part of it was due to being raised roman catholic being raised in that strict of an environment and being a girl growing up, knowing that you are 
subservient to men is difficult. It's very difficult growing up in that kind of environment. And I think a lot of girls do grow up to have an interest in witchcraft because it's empowering, it's freeing, and it makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy and whole. It's not something that I ever got from a church. So I started really early with it. Some people start way later. Some people are raised with it. But I think a lot of women do feel pulled to it. And it's not just women. Men practice as well. But I think specifically for me as a woman, that was something that made me feel drawn toward it was that feeling of empowerment. Like I was enough. Like I was just as good as. So, like you said, you, you performed your first spell when you were 12. Yeah. How did you learn to do your first spell? Was it something you... <laughs> read up on a book or um well when i was 12 we got the internet I and it kind of young you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was 12 and we got the internet and while my mom was at work i was just looking up a bunch of stuff and i'd always been interested in this so i was looking up little bits of information like the very basic stuff the stuff that everybody that is interested in searches how to become a witch what is a witch what do you have to do to be a witch that kind of stuff and then i stumbled across different spells so i did, decided to try one and it was a disaster <laughs> <laughs> what was disastrous about it um well it was a spell to summon a fairy friend and that was a terrible idea because <laughs> i did it being a 12 year old thinking like it's going to be like Peter Pan, there's going to be this little winged person standing in front of me and I'm going to have summoned a fairy. That's not the case. That's not what the fae or fairies are. Th you're not going to see them unless they want you to. And I don't mean to sound like a crazy person talking about the fairies or anything, but over the course of the next few weeks, things started going missing. Uh -huh. There was one time where my mom and I were talking in the kitchen and I'm standing by the doorway leading into the other room and she's on the far side and she sets her coffee cup down to go pour some more tea or whatever in it. And she turns around to grab it and it's gone. <laughs> I watched her set it down, watched her grab the tea bag and the kettle off the stove, turn to put them in and the cup is gone, not on the counter, not in the sink. Out on the floor, just gone. <laughs> and it kept escalating after that to the point where we would go in our bathroom and all of the bottles that were in there had been like squeezed. So the contents were just exploded all over the bathroom. <laughs> and it wasn't any of us because we were at school. My sister and I were at school. My mom was at work and we came home to this. Oh so it obviously wasn't us. <laughs> We got blamed for it, but it wasn't us. <laughs> and then we moved shortly after, and I have noticed that they have had trouble keeping tenants in that in that duplex. Oh wow! So I'm sorry if you live on Dearborn Street in Gerard. <laughs> <laughs> so what what was it that was your mom always a practicing witch, or did this happen after you? After me, um, I've been practicing off and on for about ten. 10 years or so, 10, 15 years. My mom started later than me. And it was after I came to her and was talking about me being pagan. That's kind of how I opened that door a little bit. So I was really nervous about talking to my very Christian mother oh, I'm about me being pagan and a witch. I thought she might have a little more of an open mind to me being pagan. So we started with that. And then I started talking to her little bits about witchcraft and just kind of seeing how she felt. And then she said that she had no issue with it and she was actually really interested in it. And I was like, thank God, because guess what? <laughs> oh gosh, did then you tell her like yeah. oh my god. Yeah. And now we get together for like our Sabbaths and everything and we celebrate together as a family. The only person that really doesn't come is my grandma because she's still really strict Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. 
and she would be devastated and probably never talk to me again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell, tell everybody who may not be as familiar about paganism. Uh, so, I mean, some people will hear you say the statement that, hey, I was pagan and a witch, where some people would probably lump them together in some way and say, okay, but then again, it's like being a pagan yeah. witch. You can be both. Tell yeah. everybody about what the pagan religion means to you. What is the, if you were to tell somebody what, uh, that wanted to know what a pagan was and what you believe in a nutshell, I know it's got to yeah. of thing, but. Well, I myself, I, I don't adhere to any certain strict beliefs because they're saying you're pagan is kind of just like saying you're Christian. There's tons of different little groupings. It's, and <clears throat> paganism is pretty much most polytheistic religions, religions that have more than one God. A majority of them are pagan, like say the Vikings, that was a pagan <laughs> way of life. For me, it's hard to say I, I'm pagan because nature is my religion. I don't, worship anything really but it's just something that i honor and that's the way a lot of pagans are i personally don't think any one god is greater than another i think they're all real i think they all have a purpose it's not something i personally deal with on a regular basis in my craft or in my religious life but every pagan is going to be different too Everyone's going to have a different set of beliefs that they follow. My basic philosophy for life is don't be a douche. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Treat others with respect the way you want to be treated. Nice. Just be nice. <laughs> That's it. But then the, the umbrella term for paganism, Wiccans are pagan. I mean, it, it, technically, I guess Satanists are pagan. But... So are a lot of others. I mean, it's not just the things that have negative connotations. Actually, you know what? Satanists are more atheists. But <clears throat> pagan is really revolving around nature and other deities. It's anything that's pretty much not Hindu, Christian, or Jewish. I think okay. I got that right. <laughs> or Muslim. Muslim's probably in that group, too. Yeah, they get kind of lumped in. I forget about them sometimes. I'm so sorry. Um, so the thing about pagans is I do feel like that in, in general, they get a bad rap. I think when oh, yeah. most Christians think pagan, they automatically think negative stuff. They, they think that all pagans are more or less Satanist or they're all barbarians. Pagan. And then your Satanists get mad because your Satanists are like, well, we don't worship, <laughs> we worship some horned demon. It's just a way of life is what we're, you know, so it's just like every, yeah. everything's got these negative connotations just, and it's more out of people just not really knowing. And that's why I like to have these conversations yeah. uh, with witches and pagans and yeah. the young lady wanted to practice Santeria and, and uh -huh. all that. But I think it's good to at least get, find out what everybody's thought process is and, and what it really is rather than, you know, I saw serpent and rainbow, so I know what Santeria is. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> we were, I think we've been yeah. shed a lot of light on voodoo uh, as opposed to what people thought and what the voodoo dolls were supposed to be originally. And, you know, everybody's just got yeah. this process with what they've seen in the movie. So, Well, I think people are starting to get a better understanding of what especially voodoo is and that it's not it's not bad. There's nothing bad about it. There's. There's nothing bad about any of these religions out there. There's there's bad people that practice, but there's nothing bad about the the practices. With voodoo, that's something that is getting a lot more attention, especially lately, to where it's not as misunderstood as it once was. A lot of people, if you ask them about voodoo, they're not going to say something about devil worshipers. They're going to know something about it other than that. They might mention the voodoo doll. A lot of people know that it was, wasn't was meant for, like, cursing. It, it was meant to help. Mm -hmm. So 
now it seems to be a little better understood. And I think more and more people are starting to understand pagan religions and witchcraft, especially a little bit better and know that it's not devil worship. I mean, there are some groups that do worship the devil. Right. But. Satanists will tell you that Satanists are different than devil worshipers. Yes, they are. Yeah. Satanists are more atheistic. They're just kind of. They're like Aleister Crowley. They're they're all about that. Just do whatever, whatever you want. I mean, it's yeah. It is. Don't hurt anybody else, but do what you want. It's one of those things. It's and I have the kind of the same perspective. Do what you want. Think the way you want. Believe the way you want. Don't hurt anybody else or infringe on anybody else's happiness or beliefs. And you're good. It's that same. Don't be a douche. <laughs> So I wanted to go back to the voodoo thing uh, uh -huh. in case people are unaware. So the actual voodoo dolls originally mm -hmm. were by the medicine men. Yes. Who they were dealing with all kinds of people with all kinds of different languages. So they didn't understand everybody and they didn't have uh, Walgreens to keep track of everything <laughs> or their, the HIPAA laws or any of that stuff back then. So what they would do is you would bring them a doll that looked like you. And whatever, if you had a problem with your knee, then they would stick a pin in the knee and put it up on their shelf. So when you came back, you pointed to which doll was yours and they remembered, oh, okay, mm -hmm. you, you had a knee problem. That was the record keeping. It wasn't about anything. Uh, yeah. A, a mal, you know, trying to hurt anybody or anything like that. It was literally just their, their records that their doctor to be able to keep their patients straight. Yeah. Well, that is weird. I did not know that. Yeah, it was never meant to be anything malicious or to curse somebody. That's actually a Western European concept because they had puppets that they would use to curse people. So it's one of those things where people know about something, so they automatically assume that something is similar, so it must be exactly the same. Right, let's get to some of these questions we've ignored a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's just they were, they were letting them build up a little bit. Sam said, so was the book in Hocus Pocus a grimoire or a book of shadows? The eye was off-putting. <laughs> should, have, should have won, just saying. First of all, I hope you haven't seen the movie because it's horrible. But if you it did. Don't I you would... ever say that again. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. I love that movie. So was it a grimoire or was it a book of shadows? Or do you I'd say since. Movie? Since she shared it with her sisters, I would say grimoire. Let's see. What Brian has so Plus, things. Book of Shadows is a relatively new kind of concept. That's from like the Wiccan uh, traditions. Oh. And she said, "Oh, fairies aren't as friendly as you think they are." No. They're like Tinkerbell. All I want to know is Mr. Roper from Three's Company was scared of him because he kept talking about him all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, fairies are terrible. So, just as young, she didn't get that. Nope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. That's a reference <laughs> for someone much older. Uh, Sam said, Jess is creating content. That's just smart business. Brian said, most early Christians were pagans. Yeah. All those early convert converts were Romans. Oh, he's the same one. Yeah. Marie Laveau comes to mind when you say voodoo. Well, and uh -huh. it, that brings up just what we were talking about earlier. You talked about being a, uh, the ability to be Christian, mm -hmm. and be a witch. You know, Marie Laveau would, would go to Catholic church every single Sunday. Uh, yeah. And, and, and go right, right out and, and, you know, in, in the square, Congo Square, and do the, uh, the, the ceremonies out there, the voodoo ceremony. So, yeah. I mean, she was able to do both and, and, a lot of what the voodoo is in mm. New Orleans became, you know, it was brought over by the slaves. And then a lot of the Catholic ceremony was kind of introduced into it to what voodoo is today. So it, it's not originally the way it came over from Africa, but it did get a little bit of the Catholic mixed into it. And that was mainly yeah. because they were scared that they were going to find out. So they, they've added enough to it. So if somebody walked up and caught them, it would look like they were practicing Catholicism. All right. And that's uh, that's the same with a lot of different practices. You kind of incorporate more things that you learn into it, because why not? <laughs> yep, 
I agree 100%. Let me see if we got any more questions that I missed. Brian said most born again Christians would be considered pagans previously as they aren't Jewish, they are Gentiles. You are just chock full of information, sir. Yes. Olivia <laughs> had no idea about the voodoo dolls and medicine. That's what we're here for, Olivia. Plus, I sent you out a, uh, a packet today, so you'll get yours Tuesday or Wednesday as well. Okay. So we're getting ready to wrap this thing up. Jess, tell everybody how they can find your show, how they can keep up with you on social media. Well, you can find Shoes, Booze, and Tattoos on any podcast platform, wherever they listen to you. They can probably find my show. And if you can't, please let me know. <laughs> I'm on social media, Shoes, Booze, and Tattoos, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What was the last part of that? Or did I get it? <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. Okay. <laughs> So there it is, the logo again, so you can see it real quick before we get off here. As usual, and Jess, it's been fun. We'll have to get you out to one of the live events. I don't know if you're going to be able yes. to get to uh, uh, what is the one, September Point Pleasant again, but we've got that one, and uh, we've got Gettysburg, which is a little far for you, too. But Well, still, I know my husband and my mom do want to visit Gettysburg at some point, so maybe I'll be able to swing that. Awesome. Like I said, I know you were coming to Louisville, and that didn't happen, and Sucks. Yeah. Is what it is. So, all right. Thank guys. you so much for having me on here. Oh, we, we loved it. Uh, like I said, I probably should have had you on here before then, but we want to get oh, all that's our right. friends in here. And, and, and uh, there was a couple of newer shows, like, uh, you know, your your haunted uh, vacation. Not vacation. Why do I keep wanting to say vacation? Your haunted holiday. We wanted to get <laughs> them on here and get them a little bit of exposure. And we definitely want to get you some exposure because. You've been a good well, thank you. Of the show, and your show is absolutely fantastic. It is really it's, good. It's very well produced, and mm -hmm. it's just well done. And I want people to to go out and give it a listen. So anytime I can get you some exposure. Well, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, Angie yeah. said, "Is Pigeon Forge one a yay or nay?" Pigeon wow. Forge is a go. It's a hundred percent go. Mm -hmm. Unless something happens between now and then, it's unexpected. Like they, there's maybe a second outbreak of corona and they shut down the facility up there we're doing it or something uh, everything's good but we actually went up there this past <laughs> or, i said or dinosaurs show up <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably do. but yeah we we actually went up there and checked out the facility and got to go inside and look mm -hmm. at it and everything uh, a couple of days ago we're going to do uh, we sold less tickets so we, we went from 90 tickets available to 65 tickets that way we can social distance if we need to and uh, everybody can wear a mask if they want to. We're going to have plenty of hand sanitizer and all that stuff. So all the provisions have already been made. And so uh, everybody should feel safe. So, but yeah, if you want to come, we're doing our best to make it as safe as possible. Yeah, that's our number one concern is to make sure everybody can be comfortable and feel comfortable and be safe. So that's, that's why we cut the number of tickets down and we should be good to go. There's about 30 tickets left, I think. So, and that's uh, July 15th mm -hmm. or 18th. I think it's July 18th. Yeah. Gettysburg is August 15th. That's what was throwing me off. So <laughs> Both shows are going to go on. So we're good for that. So, all right, guys, that's all we got for you. Wait a minute. I got another question. <laughs> Would you guys be doing any of the ghost tours at Gettysburg? I don't know. Uh, we're obviously going to get up there early enough a day or two early to be able to not have to rush. Cause that's a long drive for us. It's about seven, seven, seven and a half hours. Uh, but we're definitely going to be doing that. So, but we'll, we'll see. Hopefully I'd like to go do one of the ghost tours. It'd be silly to go up there and not do one as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, he said, and it, and that's going to be another one. We can social distance. That's a huge place. We're actually mm -hmm. doing that one at a fire department in downtown Gettysburg. And that one originally, it has 125 seats. Uh, my guess is that it's probably only going to sell. We didn't think we were going to sell 125 seats anyway, we would hope, but uh, that's just what it holds. So my guess is no matter what we sell, we'll still be able to social distance, even oh, yeah. if we get 80 or 90 sold. So that's good. And I think we've got about 30 sold for that already. Those 10, everything slowed down when Corona hit. Everybody stopped buying tickets. Normally, we would have probably had... 50 or 60 tickets sold for that. But now that we're letting people know that it's going on and we're doing some social distancing and all that stuff, uh, I think as we get closer to the date and if things hold fresh and we don't have all these uh, second waves and stuff hitting, I think if that's the case, then I think people will start snatching those tickets up really quick. 
Hopefully. Probably. <laughs> so that's the goal. Come to Georgetown, Kentucky. Uh, said that? That's that's a uh, that's a tough drive for us. That's every bit of <laughs> every bit of fifteen minutes. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we we've been in Georgetown probably three or four times over the past uh, couple weeks. So. Oh yeah. But, we love Georgetown actually. Yeah, I we did. lived in Georgetown when we first moved here. Mm-hmm. We lived in Louisville, and then we moved to the Virgin Islands for five months, and we actually moved back on July fourth six years ago, and that's where we moved to was Georgetown. So yeah. we lived there for about a year and a half before we moved to Lexington. Hmm. All right, we're officially doing it this time. We're done. Right. <laughs> next week, same. next week, it's an early show, 2 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have Lee Solway from Realm of the Supernatural oh, from yeah. over in Great Britain. And we're doing this one for all the people. So if you're watching this later, because it's too late right now, mm-hmm. it's like right now, it's like five hours. So it's two or three o'clock in the morning over in, in parts of Europe. And a lot of you guys couldn't join us live. So we're going to do that one early with a, uh, great britain guest that way you guys can get in on one live as well so yeah yeah it was good seeing you honey it was good seeing you too oh yeah and i'm sure we'll see you soon in the future in i person. hope so and thanks everybody for joining in we appreciate and love you guys yes thank you see you guys next week <laughs>